There it is, right there. That That is a 300 horsepower engine, and I'll turn it all the way around. It's a heat engine. We call that a heat engine. Uh, and it weighs about 82 pounds, but it doesn't have to be made that heavy duty. This one's made extra heavy duty. Um, and uh, you can see the you can see the whole apparatus here and how it turns and everything. But there's basically four four inputs right here's one of them. I don't know if that's going to show up on the camera or not. Let's see. Yeah, we we can see it. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, maybe I can get it turned toward the light or something. But uh, maybe I can get out of the light. Maybe that helps. But uh, there's there's four. I'll put the camera back and I'll explain it to everybody. Um, there's uh, there's basically a, a wheel in there that uh, spins at a very high speed, about 30,000 RPM, 20,000 RPM, somewhere in that range. And it's got four uh, four jets that hit, you know, all from the same direction that uh, shoot in shoot in uh, gas, basically. And we're going to go into the whole design on one of the future shows, either next week or the week after. Probably not next week, but uh, one of the future shows. But this is basically a heat engine. It runs off of ambient heat in the environment, uh, in which there's plenty of it down where you live in Texas. Oh yeah. Uh, and this worked. This worked even in Ohio. So uh, this this is good. When I say it worked in Ohio. It worked in the summertime in Ohio. It was useless in the wintertime. But it, it did run a car and it did put out about 300 horsepower on a hot day, um, sunny day. So that's uh, that's plenty for a car. Matter of fact, that was too much. We actually broke the drive shaft uh, one, one yeah one time, but uh, because mm. we tried to accelerate too fast, uh, <laughs> it's too much power basically. But uh, sometimes you know so and this can be used even stationary, not just in automobiles, but off of houses. So we're going back on, and we promised everybody we we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, the heat engine. And it's amazing the emails I've gotten. People ask me, uh, "Will it run on gasoline? Will it run on diesel?" <laughs> they don't understand it. Uh, a heat engine. We're going to talk a little bit about it tonight. Uh, and brother, you feel free to interject if you'd like. Would you like to explain it, or you want me to? Do well, oh uh, yeah, I might mention a couple of things. The, the reason you might have gotten an email like that is because uh, I neglected to uh, tell everyone that it was a free energy uh, system. <laughs> And so people may assume that it actually has to have fuel, but that's uh, that's really not the case. It's it's it really basically just runs off ambient heat. Yeah, we're going to we're we're putting the camera on the uh, the engine, and it does run off of ambient heat. It does not, in other words, heat in the environment, and and there's always heat in your environment unless you're at absolute zero. By the way, and uh, this is the this is the engine that actually ran an automobile. It's been. It's been redone now. This a uh, uh, little bit. It was running something else. They, they did a stationary unit afterward. Uh, but this is this is it. I'm going to turn it around a little bit so people can see it. It split out. We pony brake this at 300 horsepower, uh, and that's so that's how much power this thing put out. Now the way it works is there's four little jets here, and they're they're going in at an angle, and there's a flywheel. I don't know if, I, if the camera's showing it or not. Can you see that little jet? What do you think, brother? Uh, yeah, you can see it. Can you get the camera just a little bit closer, maybe? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it. We'll talk about it again next week just a little bit, and I'll do a drawing next week. Next week we won't have the machine, so tonight we'll have the machine. And this is so the people can learn a little more next week if they want. Uh, that's about as close as I can get it with everything I got here. Um, but uh, there's a there's a jet inlet jet here. There's another one here. And there's four of them, and they they basically push the wheel, which the wheel is sort of set up like a gear. It has teeth, and when the when the gas jets shoot in there, it causes it to spin really fast. And as you see, you see me turn into here. This thing we went all the way off the uh, the RPM gauge, which the RPM gauge went up to uh, I don't remember it's twenty thousand or twenty five thousand or thirty thousand, but it went all the way off of that. And so it's a it was we we estimated thirty thousand to forty thousand RPM on this thing, which is really fast, and uh, pretty awesome horsepower. Uh, like I say, at uh, at that speed, horsepower is a function of uh, speed times uh, speed times uh, force or speed times foot pound. You know, speed would be feet and then pounds. So five hundred fifty foot pounds per second is one horsepower. In case people are wondering, uh, I get that question a lot. But what this runs on is a refrigeration type system or a heat pump system. 
Uh, you don't need any input. We actually had an automobile running with this exact, this is the engine, basically. Uh, but the heat, the, the fuel, came right off the road, off the asphalt. And you can run this off also off the roof of a house. And we'll be offering classes in this technology. We are, we are offering classes in this technology this summer. And so people that are interested need to start with a consultation from the gifts page. Uh, but basically, I, I'm turning it so you can see all the way around it. Like I said, this is getting shipped out, uh, so it won't be here next week. But uh, this is basically a turbine. Uh, weighs eight, this one weighs 82 pounds. They don't have to be made quite that heavy duty. Stainless steel and uh, uh, high speed is what it's made for. And that, that gives people a little bit of idea. Uh, the basics are... And, and we, we want to save a little bit for next week, so we won't cover all the basics. But uh, the basics are basically that you heat the uh, you heat the uh, the tank, which 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 the tank has um, uh, in this case ammonia. You can use other refrigerants. It has ammonia. It's a sealed system, closed loop system. You heat that up, and the pressure goes up. Anytime you heat a liquid, the pressure goes up. And when you release it into these valves, there's a pressure drop. And uh, the the it all turns to gas basically, and there's a, a there's a pump that's pumping it back into the tank basically. So that's uh, that's the basics of the system. Uh, there's also a cooler, you know, and so on. We'll talk more about it next week, and we are offering classes as well. So if you have any questions now, you're welcome to ask them. But uh, that gives the basics. We promise people some of the basics here. You have anything you want to add, brother? Uh, no, I think I think you covered it, and and you also mentioned uh, uh, last week, I believe it was, that uh, uh, it it did run a car, it did run, uh, you know, I, I think you had a, uh, a trans, uh, basically an adapter to a standard transmission that actually uh, brought the RPM down so that you could use it in a standard uh, automobile transmission. Yeah. So. Oh, I'm sorry. You're cutting in and out, so I couldn't tell if you stopped or not. Uh, did I interrupt you there? No, you go ahead. Okay, this, this is over Unity technology, in the, in, like all over Unity. Over Unity is an open system. Uh, people think over Unity is somehow a closed system. It's not. Open, over Unity is always open systems. Uh, just about always, as far as I can think of. Uh, yeah, I'd say always. And this is, of course, an open system where you're taking heat out of the environment and uh, basically turning into horsepower. And uh, guess, uh, I guess the audience, we should let them guess and see if they can tell us next week what the side effect is for using this type of technology to the environment. We're going we're gonna to see if anybody can guess that. If you guess that, we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll at least mention your name on the show. We might figure out some other kind of uh, prize to give you. But uh, figure out what the side effect is on this type of technology on the environment. The, uh, the uh, ammonia is closed loop, and whatever refrigerant you use, if you don't use ammonia, it's closed loop. So none of that leaks out, uh, but even if ammonia did leak out, it's it's basically good for soil and it's good for plants and so on, as long as you don't breathe heavy concentrations of it. And and uh, so that's that's uh, that's the way this works. Is it is a closed loop system. The, the the fuel is heat, and the heat gets picked up from the road. Or if it's a stationary unit, you can pick it up from the roof of your house. If you have a one side that faces south, uh, it gets pretty hot, and there's a way to take the heat off the roof and, and run that. So that's that's a fascinating technology that is available for everybody. Okay, we promised people we'd give them another little lesson on the heat engine, and, and sometimes I call it a heat turbine. And if you watch the program the last two weeks, you actually saw the physical machine, actually the last three weeks, I think. We talked about it a little bit each week. And tonight I'm going to show you some drawings uh, and so that people can get a better idea of how it works. Uh, this particular drawing is... <coughs> The main flywheel is the center here, and then you see there's teeth on the main flywheel, a little bit like a gear, and then there's these jets where the, the pressurized gases shoots in, and the jet, one of them shoots in this direction, one of them shoots in this direction, and, uh, and that spins it up really fast. This thing goes about, uh, it went off the RPM gauge, which if I remember right, the RPM gauge went up to 25,000 roughly, and then it, then it wouldn't measure after that. So it went above that. We saw it climbing all the way up to that speed, and then it went off the gauge. So I'm guessing this thing uh, goes 30 or 40,000 RPM is what this goes. It's about, uh, it's about 8 inches diameter, 
and you can make them different sizes and so on. And this is the key. This is the engine you could say of your car if you put it in a car. Although you can run houses and so on with it. And uh, let me also show you a little block diagram. Um, hopefully you can see that. But basically, this here is the is the, is the main part of the uh, the turbine, the main engine. Um, <laughs> okay. Let me see if I got that right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I got it upside down. You're right. You're right. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for telling me. Okay. I was wondering why it looked a little odd. Okay, so there's the turbine, and here's the pump. The pump is mechanically connected to the turbine. You could have a pulley here or whatever. This, on the mechanical side, this could this could be put over here. This is kind of like just a block diagram. Mechanical side, you go to a high-speed transmission also. And, of course, you could hook your pump in here, too, if you want, after it steps down. And then that would go to the um, to the drive shaft, which goes to the wheel. That represents the wheel or the load. And this thing, we, we uh, dyno tested it over 300 horsepower, just so people know what the power was on this thing. And uh, we built several, a few of these, and uh, we will be offering more classes and, and so on on these things. But anyway, here's the pressure tank, and here's the... Um, uh, probably a pressure relief valve. Let's see. Yeah, that's a, that's like a, not a relief valve, but a, uh, I forget what they call it. But anyway, it's it's a standard heat pump, very similar to standard heat pump design. Uh, so I think that's all the parts. People, there's where the heat comes in, heats up the pressure in the tank. The tank pressure goes way up. Uh, that goes shoots into the turbine after it's dropped a little bit through one of these special valves that they use in refrigeration. I forget what these are called. But uh, anyway, then, then that speeds up the turbine. That's where all the horsepower is. That mechanical energy not only runs the car, but is also an extra belt to run this pump here. And that pump pumps it back down after it's you expended most of the energy. It pumps it back down and back into the tank. Now, that, uh, that gives people the basics. So thank you all for your question. This is Brother Ron again. It says, if the turbine turns at such a high rate, is there concern about flywheel explosion? would a composite material be needed to keep it from expanding or exploding? Or if the weight of the flywheel is, is the weight of the flywheel critical to the performance? Uh, the weight it doesn't need to be as heavy as what we did, and it does turn at a high rate of speed, but we've never had it explode. So uh, I don't know if that's a concern. Uh, obviously, yeah, things will go sometimes faster than you think. Uh, 30,000, it didn't explode, but it was made out of some really good stainless steel that's real strong. And... Um, uh, yeah, so that hopefully answers your question. Uh, yeah, there is always a danger of explosion when you turn anything at high speed, but that particular one never exploded in that, you know, 